What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex. Today I'm gonna to be showing you the new acros for the 300 gallon build. Now I just picked these up a few days ago and they're doing pretty well. And uh, I wanted to just pretty much get a uh, close up video of them in the containers and then also what they look like when they were inside the reef tank. Now you might be asking yourself, why am I buying Acropora now when the 300 gallon build is not even starting until September? Well, basically I have to tear down the 125 and since I'm doing that, I'm getting rid of all the rock structures that I currently have, at least the left and the middle rock structure. The right one is majority of his Acropora and I'm probably just gonna keep that up until I end up breaking down the entire system. But either way, there's gonna be two rock structures that are slowly being taken apart over the next you know, six to seven months. And honestly, I still wanna enjoy the tank as much as I can. So I figured I'd go ahead and tear down the left rock structure completely over the next month or two and then build a new one out of dry rock and go ahead and grow these new acros on it at least until July. Now, before we continue, I just want to say thank you and give a quick shout out to Pat at Murphy's Reefing for sponsoring these Acropora. I really do appreciate the support that he's been giving me on the new 300 gallon build. Now, the plan is I'm going to go ahead and grow out each one of these Acros, frag them and send him a piece as a token of my appreciation. That way he can enjoy them as much as I'm going to. Now, there was a total of 21 Acropora in this order, and I actually got them from a local reef club member who lives only a few miles away. Now, this person's actually upgrading their reef tank in the next week or so, so this was a perfect opportunity to go ahead and get some Acros before the, he made the switch. Now, when it comes to purchasing Acropora, I will only purchase from somebody that I know, or at least a reliable source that I know that the tank has been taken care of. The issue is, is that Acropora tend to come with what we call Acropora eating red bugs, and they are a pain in the ass. Not so much the treatment process, but the overall stress on the Acro is pretty bad, and then the cost to get the medication in order to treat it, and the replacement of salt that you have to do in these huge water changes is all very expensive and can be a pain in the ass if you have a larger reef tank. Now, I do plan on doing an in-depth guide here in the near future on how to treat Acropora eating red bugs in a reef tank, but I will give you a quick summary of the process now. Basically, the only effective way to kill them is to use a dog heartworm medication called Interceptor. Now, the only legal way you can get this is to bring your dog to the vet, pay for that appointment, pay for the dog to get tested, and then pay for the medication. It's a pretty expensive process. In the end, it cost me just under $200 to treat my reef tank. Now, once you have your medication, you got to go ahead and treat the reef tank once per week for three weeks. Now, what this does is it actually kills all the living red bugs and then waits for a little while for the new eggs to hatch, kills those. And then, you know, the third week pretty much finishes off anything that might have hatched in that time frame. Now, after each treatment, you got to go ahead and do a 50% water change. And that's where another chunk of money comes into it. It's not so bad if you have a 20, 30 gallon tank and you're doing a 50%. But if you're doing 50% on 180 gallons of water, it can get expensive pretty quickly. So you can go ahead and add about $60 to my already almost $200 bill, and that's what it costs to effectively remove the uh, Acropora eating red bugs from my system. For those of you who have been growing Acropora for an extended period of time, have probably already dealt with these red bugs or know somebody who has. Now the best thing you can do is just prevent them from getting in your reef tank altogether. Now, how do you do that? You can go ahead and dip your Acropora in the Interceptor solution, or you can dip them in a Bayer solution, but ultimately the best thing you can do is quarantine them just to see if the red bugs pop up. Now, during the quarantine process, you're gonna to wanna to look for signs of these bugs. The first thing you're gonna notice is that the Acro will start fading in coloration. Now, it's not so much bleached out yet, but eventually it will bleach out completely and die. But before it does that, it basically turns a palish color and you will see the uh, red bugs at this point. They're really not hard to miss, especially when the, the coloration of the Acro is pretty much gone. And what's going on is they're eating the skin off the Acropora. That's how they survive. They reproduce and move on to the next Acro and that's just kind of what they do. Now, if you notice the red bugs during the quarantine process, your best bet is to treat them immediately with the interceptor, as I mentioned previously. Do it the three times uh, because they do do a lot of damage in a short period of time to your Acropora. And there's nothing worse than seeing a football size Acropora getting eaten alive by these bugs and only catching it when it's too late. Now, this time around, I am not going to be quarantining these Acros. As I stated before, I got them from a reliable source. I'm simply just going to dip them in Coral RX just to make sure I get any other pests before I put them in the main display. Now, I wanted to put them in my frag system and use that as a quarantine system as I usually do with any new coral. But the problem is, is I'm using that system to, uh, you know, have coral sit there before I ship it out to you guys. Now, why would I use that as a quarantine system? That wouldn't make any sense and it wouldn't benefit you guys if something was to pop up. So since I got it from reliable source, I'm simply just going to dip it, put it in the main display, acclimate it to the type of lighting that I have and see how well they do. 
Now, speaking of light, these actually came out of a reef tank that was full T5 high output bulbs. So since I'm using uh, LEDs and T5s, I really got to make the adjustment slow. So I have them actually pretty low in the reef tank on the racks and I'm slowly bringing the racks up uh, a little bit every week until they completely adjust. Now, how do I know that they're adjusted? There'll be polyp extension. There will be encrusting growth on the frag plug. So I'll know that they are doing well. Now, until they start showing signs of growth, I'm not going to mess with them, do anything with them, put them on any rock structures. I'm just simply going to allow them to adjust that way it betters the chances of them surviving. Now I think my adjustment time on these guys is going to be a little bit more finicky than what I usually have to deal with. Now the reason for this is that I'm getting fluctuations in alkalinity because of all the coral that I'm cutting out of the reef. Now not only am I cutting the coral and, and some of it is healing in that tank so there's going to be the dip in calcium and alkalinity during that healing process but also I'm still continuing to dose on a daily basis as normal. So with a ton of coral being removed, I have to adjust that dosing and to make sure that I'm not overdosing the tank, putting too much in and then having the fluctuations in both ways. Now at this point, it's pretty much just a balancing game between coral being taken out, dosing calcium alkalinity, coral healing, adding the new acros, and uh, you know just the tank adjusting on a daily basis or at least a weekly basis at that point. Now what I'm doing is I'm testing my alkalinity twice a week to see what kind of fluctuations I'm getting and making adjustments if I feel that something's going too far in one direction. Thankfully so far I haven't had to make any major changes to the reef. Everything seems to be adjusting fine and um, you know time will tell and we'll see how everything works out. Well guys that's about it for this video. I appreciate you sticking around. If you have any questions feel free to put it in the comment section below or contact me directly. Also go ahead and check out the website fishofhex.com. I have my frag plugs up for sale now and what coral will be going live on February 13th. Now understand that some of the stuff will not be uh, going up that I have in the reef tank because it's just not where I can go ahead and cut it. A lot of the stuff is encrusted on the rocks and honestly right now guys the frag tank is completely full. I have four racks in the main display that are completely full so I just don't have any room to cut any more coral so uh, if there is a product that is out of stock when I do go live on the 13th feel free to send me an email and I will let you know when it will be back in with all that being said if you guys like the video feel free to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down either way it benefits the channel and if you guys like the content that I provide and the services that I provide for the community here feel free to subscribe to the channel I really do appreciate it and as always guys I'll see you next time peace